So in preparation for the conversation with the president, we'll have also joining us in the studio, John Gidongo, who is the CEO of Inuka, Kenya Nisisi. <laughs> Uh, we hadn't told State House that this was going to happen. So. <laughs> <laughs> they may just decide, uh, okay. <laughs> this one, John Gidongo. No, I'm not coming. <laughs> uh, so you wanted to have a, a face-to-face yes. talking heads. Let's just have a conversation, you yes. know. This is, is the country, Kenya. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and <laughs> and it, there's no better way of having such kind of a conversation than, you know, having everybody in the room. Right. John a very good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to have you in the Situation Room, at Kenya's biggest conversation. Thank you very much. That is called a hot seat. It's uh, called a hot seat. Yes. All right. Yeah. Okay. So you you'll feel it. That's okay. You'll feel the warmth as you have this conversation. Great. Inuka, Kenya Nisisi. We've had a conversation with you about this on the phone before. Yes. But you can just remind everybody who is Inuka Kenya Nisisi and what yeah. do you do? Inuka, Inuka Kenya Nisisi is a, it's a non-governmental organization. Mm-hmm. I, uh, we're involved in governance uh, broadly, um, corruption more specifically. Uh, we have a range of projects, uh, um, in, including a, a publication uh, called The Elephant, which is an online publication. And um, I can go on and on about what we do, but I mm-hmm. mean, you know, my area has always been the area of anti-corruption. Yep. That's what I've always been interested in mm-hmm. and focused on. And uh, and uh, I think that's what brings me here this morning. To, to talk unless, about... Uh, and, unless you have <laughs> other plans. <laughs> well, there are always plans. <laughs> there are always plans. That's what happens on this show. So we want to talk about, of course, as we head in towards the general election, later this year we were eagerly awaiting the judgment of the supreme court yesterday to see the direction that the bbi is going to take is it going to be an added ballot in the august 9th election now we know no added ballot in the august 9th election but the conversation that has led to this point is still the same conversation that is going to shape the campaigns for the next couple of months Mm. on okay do we um uh, do we have leadership that is focused on the best interest of the country or do we have leadership that's focused on self-interest? Have we been on that trajectory for a long time? Have we not? Recently, you penned an article that said this is a first election that's going to be about nothing. Hmm. And what do you mean by that? It's going to be about nothing. It's about very many things. It's about bottom-up. It's about uh, Babakia. It's about Alofzita. It's, it's, it's very many things. It's about the economy and uh, the social side of things for the country. Those are small things. Those are tiny little technical things, uh, to be honest. Um, In 1992, um, it was about the reintroduction of multi-party politics in Kenya. That was massive. It affected every every part of our lives, socially, economically, politically. It was exciting. We were all lining up to vote for different parties for the first time. Mm Same kind of situation in 1997, where we had had an inter-parties parliamentary group, uh, uh, you know, meeting mm-hmm. and making changes to the constitution. Uh, again, it was about the constitution, the debate around uh, devolution that started, it was called Majimbo then. Again, we were debating grand issues that will affect this country into perpetuity. 2002, major election, more is going. After 24 years, you know, uh, of of of, uh, of rule which um, you know a lot can be said uh, in terms of um, the way he governed uh, the country so the country was lifting a major boulder off its shoulder and we were testing something uh, as a people as Kenyans can we make this transition peacefully can we have um, a transition from a, a, a president who's been a dictator has now become a Democrat since November 1991 when he accepted multi-party politics. We're now having multi-party elections. We had violence around the country. 300,000 people displaced. So it was a tense time. Yeah. Major issue. Mm-hmm. As, uh, two, 2002. Uh, and two. 2007. I, uh, need I say more? You know, that was Kenya's near-death experience. Mm. A major software failure. More than half a million people displaced. Thousands killed. That's when Kenya really had to sort of pause and ask ourselves, are we uh, a nation? But what was that election about? That election was 
for, which is the interesting question you ask, for the politicians who were campaigning at the time, it was about development. Mm. Uh, the economy had restabilized uh, under Mwai Kibaki, but um, we had a situation where the polarization mm. between communities within the country had reached a point where um, the moment it became apparent that the election had been rigged, um, um, the violence blew up immediately. So again, um, I would say uh, perhaps that was not one of the politicians would have wanted that to be the election about Mindeleo. Mm. That's what they were pushing before that. But as people were saying at the time, uh, Atukuli Simiti, uh, it has to be about more than that. Something that reaches, it, that, that moves us in our hearts, not only in our minds. It's not only about uh, building roads, schools, but actually uh, changing the way we live and the way we are governed. And I think that may have contributed to the kind of polarization that we saw uh, in the run-up to that election. Mm -hmm. That all that good work, uh, ostensible good work, was wiped away by the toxic politics that took place, especially since uh, the beginning of 2007 uh, and intensified very dramatically from September 20, uh, 2007 into the elections in December that, that year. Mm. Um, 2013. Um, um, ICC. ICC loomed very large uh, for the first time in our, in our history, something which had not been anticipated. We had um, a, a president and a deputy president, uh, candidates who were indicted by the International Criminal Court, mm. following on from the violence that we'd had in 2007. It was still a hangover. So that was also uh, the constitutional election. Um, it was a Katiba election because once we passed 2010, we had passed the, we had passed the constitution, we had promulgated it. Mm. So 2013, we knew we go in with ICC, but we have a new constitution. So we were also electing 47 governors, mm. MCAs, etc. 2017 um, election falls apart. Mm. Uh, the ICC, the Supreme Court declares it null and void uh, and, and deeply pro problematic, uh, leading to the handshake to where we are today. Mm. So then you ask yourself, so I asked myself, what's, 20, what's 2022 about? You know, what's the big issue? Mm. You isn't, know? isn't the big issue the economy? Is no, it, no, I, have I we agree. not have we not moved from in a way despite all the you know kind of political um discourse that's quite disjointed you know are we not beginning to see a kind of economic fo formations and positions taking place where we are seeing the so-called bottom up whether they practice and and believe mm. they have put forward an agenda that is looking at um, the post-colonial imperial state and the need to disband it. Um, so the dynasty versus the hustler, is that not it is, the I, big I, I, agenda? I, I would agree. It, it hasn't been articulated in a manner that unites us. Um, the, the, um, the hustler versus... Um, the dynasty, dynasty uh, bottom-up, wheelbarrow narrative is extremely compelling. It's populist. Like all populist agendas uh, in, in, in democratic situations, they ultimately fail. Because when you scratch below the surface, surface they're vacuous. Uh, they, have, they have no substance to them. Mm. However, they capture the imagination. And this one, rightly so, um, the opponents of it have not been able to articulate something solid to, to contest uh, this space. Mm. And it is true. And, you know, with the BBI, um, uh, the Supreme Court finding the way it found yesterday, just looking at comments that were being made on television, in newspapers, and online, it was interesting. Kenyans, um, you know, really didn't bother with the BBI reading through uh, all the judgments. We don't. You know, no one does. I don't even think the lawyers themselves... Even the judges the, were telling the lawyers, yeah. we know you don't read yeah, our we judgments. Don't, we don't, we don't, <laughs> Did don't they read say the, that? Yes. Yes. We don't yes. read, we, the big thing that Kenyans are on about right now mm -hmm. is the state and condition of the economy and the cost of living. 
and the fact that the the way the economy is structured you know fundamentally does not deliver to the majority of people um, that's the big issue uh, in front of us that's not being uh, addressed mm -hmm. except uh, in a very populist way by one one you know by um, the the UDA camp uh, which has cleverly picked it up and is running with it uh, but when you poke uh, holes uh, there's not much substance to then I think John we have just come back down to actually saying that yes you agree that there's an issue in this election there's an issue it's not an election about nothing really it, it is it, it's an election about nothing in that the politicians have not it hasn't it, it hasn't been articulated for people in a manner that we're all united around it you remember when 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 we were um well it, it may have been be before your time mm. all of you so <laughs> let me not You're looking right let me, at me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah let me let me not let me not uh, uh make assumptions um when 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 the elections were about issues like the constitution mm. think issues like devolution mm. uh, those were issues that seized the minds of all kenyans uh, across across the board um right now uh, it's almost as if um we have an entire part of our political uh, elite that would rather not discuss that uh, another part that is using it as a you know as a political whip mm. uh, against uh, the other group so uh, you know one one want one would like to have a situation where you have an election that uh, that inspires a population to make a choice on the basis of an issue mm. which they feel will affect not only their future but the future of their children and their children's children and that yet hasn't come out in a manner that is real and even as we say these things john Dis in despite all of that, mm. there are those who did feel that it was important enough to have something like the BBI come in and that it captured the minds of people, albeit 24 hours yesterday, and then going into the analysis that is inadvertently going to happen over the next couple of weeks, mm. right? Still saw it fit and important to talk about some of these things whereby power is shared, uh, um, more constituencies then... Uh, are created and that you have um, uh, the judiciary, for example, having um, an, an ombudsman, for example, appointed by the things like this. Mm -hmm. They still saw it fit to say it's necessary for us to still have this conversation. Mm -hmm. How then do you reconcile the two that you have a country that is reeling from the effects of a poor economy? But that there are those who believe that there are some things pertinent enough to be discussed and shared in the manner in which the BBI came out. I think, I I think that uh, you know, uh, I think there there are some of the issues underlying the BBI BBI conversation, which will still be had, mm. and I acknowledge that. Mm. And I don't think they're going to go away. They have been defeated in the courts. They're going to come up again. They're coming up again against. Um, the real elephant in the room for Kenya right now um, is the fact that seven out of every 10 shillings that is we pay in tax goes into paying for our debt. Uh, I think the other day we were told that um, we are now paying more for debt than we are paying for recurrent expenditure. Mm. Um, those are the realities. How do we feel them? Just look at how much when you're going when you went to the supermarket three months ago mm -hmm. and then when you went to the supermarket yesterday mm -hmm. and look at that change mm -hmm. that is the pressing issue for all kenyans in all counties add to that the fact that we have had three years without rain and we have a drought that is being is has already been declared by international uh, organizations as as a humanitarian disaster mm. in the northern part of Kenya. Not only animals dying, but people have started to die. Mm. And the fact that we're not uh, focused uh, in a singular sort of way in asking, actually, how did we get here uh, into this sort of a disastrous economic situation? Kenya, which is a dynamic uh, country economically, uh, you know we are lucky we don't have gold we don't have oil it's mm. one of the great things that i've always prayed we don't uh we don't <laughs> discover <laughs> yeah because the kenya's kenya's wealth primarily is its people mm. um, the fact that we have people who are enterprising energetic who value their education um, but for the first time 
we have a generation of young people, the millennials downwards, who are checking out, who do not, who will listen to, to Spice, mm. but won't buy your newspaper. Mm. They won't buy any newspaper. Mm. They won't read any newspaper. Um, because what is being published there, what is being said there, even by the leaders, simply doesn't uh, um, resonate, with them. resonate with them. So you can have BBI, but the attitude I think of many people is, hold on. Why are you guys talking about tinkering with the constitution when we have this giant elephant in the room, which is the, the, this, the very structure of the economy and what is it delivering to the majority of our population, mm -hmm. which is impoverished and whose conditions are declining every day. And of course, um, you know, one can't, uh, um, you know, rub away the fact that um, the COVID uh, pandemic uh, intensified and accelerated mm. some of those trends mm. in a manner that we all felt them in a very, very uh, immediate sort of way. John. I think just thinking about everything that we are saying, John, I am seeing that this election has an issue. The political class, um, just going back in the last two years, has been trying to frame the conversation ahead of this election to be about the constitution. Mm. In fact, the president more than once, twice, thrice has said in national days that we are in a constitutional moment. Mm. That was him framing mm. the 2022 transition conversation. Mm. Constitution moment, BBI, part of the, of the conversation of what happens in our political dispensation going forward. I think that was the political class trying to shape it. And then the citizens trying to re react with that and those that said yes to the BBI and those that said a loud no to the BBI and they shaped their own conversation. And this is the economy conversation, which I think is what now the UDA with the deputy president side lapped up and they saw, all right, people actually want to hear something else. And this is about economic empowerment of the people who are marginalized. The bottom-up approach is about economic employment, empowerment. Raila Odinga saw that as well. And so, all right, if I want to have a connection with the people, I also want to talk about economic empowerment and, and understanding their social needs. That's why the Baba Care issue uh, features. That's why the 6,000 shillings support for, for the vulnerable also features. So I think we have, on one side, the political push for the constitution, for the constitution and which has been shot at so many times from the courts. Now it's basically, I think they have abandoned that. And now the, the citizen conversation is economy. about the economy. It's about the economy, um, but it's also about corruption. Yeah, we cannot pretend mm. because the economy has been growing. You know, when you look at the statistics uh, throughout this period of the deepening impoverishment of the majority of Kenyans, it's not just the marginalized, it's the majority of Kenyans. I'm saying even you, all of us sitting here, have felt it yep. when we go to the university, to, to, the, to the supermarket till. So something else is going on. We are paying also for uh, a climate of, 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 rampant corruption that has been normalized. There's a time it wasn't like that. And I think that's what irritates and aggravates people that we're not talking about it. So, for example, mm -hmm. the deputy president side has actually uh, some of the advisors, like my friend David D, who has gone out directly and said, uh, said, well, actually, you know, if you want to fight corruption, go to some, go to another party. Don't come to us. Yeah. Um, you cannot fix an economy <laughs> uh, if you're not going to try and sort out um, the corruption, mm. the hemorrhage um, of, of, of the world's 20 most uh, unequal societies. Kenya's now in there. Can I interject, John? So yeah. are you sen we're essentially saying that then, because, I mean, because it is what is front and center now, you know, um, the conversation is around this BBI and this ruling, right? Yeah. So are you saying that even the things which the BBI sought to sort out, sought to fix in the yeah, country yeah. that they cannot adequately be fixed if we do not look at these other issues that are dogging the country first of all some of the issues sorry some of the issues that were the bbi issues that came out of the handshake mm. you know like we want to live together in mm. peace and harmony yep. between the different tribes why does one winner have yeah. to take all kind of um, thing i was a bit confused i don't see how why a constitution needs to fix that you and i are able to live together in peace and harmony mm -hmm. so you know that's a, that's a different debate mm -hmm. you know? so a constitutional moment quote unquote was created uh i i think that the more urgent uh, issue 
confronting us, and as I said, it's been accelerated by COVID, is this combination of the economy and corruption and what uh, the devastation it has wrought on the incomes and lives of ordinary Kenyans, mm. just made life unbearable for a majority of, of, of citizens. And I think that that is the key issue. And I think part of the reason, because one, one senses a bitterness in the way people are responding to the BBI uh, conversation. Despite not having uh, read the, the, the ruling, mm. some of the comments I saw people being made, this, the voice pops in the streets were very bitter by, by people mm. who were uh, celebrating the death of BBI. If, if they were given a spade, they would, they would have dug the grave themselves, and, uh, themselves to, to bury it. And made it 12 feet deep. And they had, uh, <laughs> made, it, made it 12 feet deep. Let this zombie never rise again. Mm. Um, and I think it wasn't so much about BBI. It's, it, it is about people feeling, listen, you guys are talking about changing the constitution, adding constituencies and all that. Um, us eat. guys are worried about food. Yeah. About, uh, we're worried about the, the education next system. Yeah. About paying. About if you know, if you have one member of your family that gets cancer, mm -hmm. that the gets a, done. that All gets a, a serious case of COVID that has yeah. to go into a ventilator, yeah. you're done. Yeah. yeah, you know, mm. um, that's a real. I think those those are the 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 the, the harsh realities that Kenyans face mm. and are responding to. And I think B, uh, BBI even with the, some of the good that it had in it, uh, has been pummeled by Kenyans because Kenyans are living in this uh, rather desperate situation mm. of um, you know, a declining shilling, uh, we've overborrowed, and we've overstolen. You know, we've you know we've always stolen. You know, but this I mean, time it was. <laughs> we've always stolen. We've always been thieves of public funds, and our elite has been created by the theft of public funds. Mm. We've now gone to a point where, um, first of all, we've done it in full view of of our people, thanks to people like yourselves and the kind of media that uh, work that you do, so social media. Uh, it's not difficult. It's not easy for the thieves to hide uh, easily. <laughs> also, it's it's flaunted in their faces. Mm. Uh, the helicopters are, are flying around. People are being told to line up to be given cash, etc., uh, etc. Et so this is what Kenyans uh, are, are seized with. And so when I was saying uh, there's no big issue, there's no big inspiring issue. Okay. Uh, we have we have a, we have we have a huge you know you know basket of negatives uh, and anger that uh, especially around the economy and corruption that has energized Kenyans um, that one one particular side of our political divide mm -hmm. has cleverly been able to take advantage of in a populist way okay let's take a break it's 28 minutes to eight John Gedongo is the CEO of Inuka Kenyan ECC we're talking about forthcoming election what's the big issue in the coming election Wanjiro Gekonyo is our guest host today she is from the Institute for Social Accountability. These conversations continue after this quick break. Keep it right here. This is the Situation Room. Our guest is John Gidongo. He is the CEO of Inuka, Kenya Nisisi. We are talking about the next general election. What's it about, Wajiro? Well, the question I had, um, because, I, yes, I think the, quest, the, the issue is the economy, whether it's been framed or not. Um, is another matter. But the article, um, first ever election about nothing, it uh, brings out the 30% who are undecided. And, and, and John, you seem to think that this is very unusual, uh, this close to the election. Um, what, what can we read into that, the, this uh, ambivalence? I mean, what I did was actually, um, I, I was struck that um, in you know, the latest opinion poll by TIFA research, 30% um, of Kenyans were undecided. Uh, despite this being, um, on the face of it, a fairly polarized situation, we have on the one side um, the, the UDA, bottoms up, wheelbarrow, uh, hustler narrative, um, and then we have, you know, um, the um, the Azimio group on the other side. So um, we have two huge political formations. This, this, you know, it's it's not usual this early before mm. an election. Mm. Yeah, that that all the others 
have been um, pushed to the sidelines and we have two 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 elephants yeah. about to go each, at each other so that kind of uh, thing usually happens much closer to an election there are constitutional reasons for that but then when we looked at the different opinion polls you look at 92 97 2007 um, look at looking at all the polls um, the number of undecideds um, you know people who who say that you know I haven't yet I haven't yet made up my mind mm. yeah. I'm waiting to read the manifesto you know all those kind of excuses to to the pollsters um, never reach 10 percent you know mm -hmm. between three and eight eight percent in all these polls now we have 30. Yeah. If you add, and that's, uh, that, that, that includes, you know, the small, there's a small part of that that includes people who said, I don't want to say, mm -hmm. I don't want to, to respond. I said, you know, why are people checking out? Why have people checked out, uh, as of now at least, uh. of this process? Why isn't this process, despite it, on the face of it being so defining, uh, because we have these two large political formations that are, you know, uh, distinct in their own ways. One of them has got a, a clear populist narrative that it is selling uh, around the country. The other one brings together a large number of influential politicians from around the country, but still a large group of Kenyans, especially young Kenyans between the ages of 18 and 24, mm. who are just feeling, listen, they are uninspired. This, this, this really doesn't, you know, does, doesn't, does, doesn't move me at all. And that's when, I, that's what I started saying. I mean, uh, uh, when people are not moved by something, there's nothing there to move them. <laughs> you know, <laughs> there's, no, I mean, they, they, they have to be, you have to be moved for or against something. Preferably for. I always like the one where people feel that they're inspired that a change is coming, we're going to contribute to it, the country's going to be a better place after this. Um, but we've lost that. And we're going into this election with a, with a you know, a, right now, a third of uh, our electorate that really doesn't feel this thing is going to make much of a difference and, you know, really can't, haven't made up their mind. And that, for me, was sort of, I asked some of the experts, I called up, I said, listen, is this usual? No. And uh, and I think for me, uh, that's when I started exploring the fact that mm. uh, Kenyans are smart people. Mm. And Kenyans, uh, like all Africans, it's the youngest continent, continent in the world, have been getting smarter and smarter over the past decades. It's 60 years now. Mm. People are educated. I mean, you know, uh, you, you talk to your newspaper seller. I know the newspaper seller will break it down for you pretty well between uh, this party and that party. You know, it's, it's no longer what it was, say, in the 70s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. Um, and people feel actually um, there's nothing to choose between these, you know, mm. uh, these guys. They're, they're all the same. They don't really believe this hustler um, narrative. They don't, it doesn't, it doesn't feel authentic doesn't mm -hmm. feel uh, mm -hmm. genuine mm -hmm. well the other side uh, the azimio side is now creating um it's uh, it's it's agenda and uh therefore right now it's about nothing um whereas if you ask people this is what strikes me mm -hmm. uh again the opinion polls themselves show the issues at the top remain the same cost of living you know uh Jobs, yeah. mm -hmm. corruption, and COVID. Mm -hmm. Those four mm -hmm. have been consistent for the last few years. But then, John, I think you've, you've actually um, pointed us in a very strong direction here in terms of the opinion polls and the huge, unprecedented number of undecided at this point yeah. to an election. Yeah. The let's also add that, and us also Andrew Franklin is, is reminding us that, let's add to the number of people who are targeted to register as voters mm -hmm. and did and did not mm -hmm. and they had the opportunity to register vo as voters they did not what exactly is happening is it is it is it because of those issues do you feel that the people are really uninspired mm -hmm. because of those things that you're saying um totally corruption mm -hmm. i think system I th of government is it about corruption really i think i think are people tired of corruption um i think i think uh people are uninspired uh by our current political class that's clear um and especially young people 
um, um, and I, this is not a scientific survey, it's me who was asking young people who I work with or, you know, and, and engage with, uh, and generally, generally all of them, except those who are embedded in political parties and formations, mm. were saying, we're not voting this time. I said, why? There's nothing to vote for. Mm. Yeah, these are all the same bunch of guys mm. telling the same bunch of lies. Mm. How do you reconcile it and operate within a society whereby, look, I mean, it's almost as though, you know, <laughs> living in two different worlds, just from what you're saying now, yeah. that you have the majority of the population concerned about a number of things, and that's what they see, right? You've mentioned some of them, drought, the economy, hunger, uh, education, health, etc., etc., but then those who are in a position to do something about it then seem to be enamored by something else. I think I th I, I I think there's a uh, there's a disconnect mm. uh, between those who govern us and those uh, you know and, and we who are governed, yeah. and I think that disconnect has grown dramatically. So um, those who govern us have become almost like you know it's a bit of comedy. Mm -hmm. uh, they're performers for us. They arrive uh, with their with their cars and they make their speeches. Yeah. And actually, if you listen to the speeches, it's not much. It's little slogans and you know, uh, there's m music, there's dancing, um, and um, what we should be speaking to, uh, in my strong opinion, and, and I saw this in two thousand and two. Mm. Where we had an we had an election campaign that was driven around the issue of corruption, mm. uh, and that captured the imagination of people, because we had had twenty four years of a very corrupt regime, and people said, "Yeah, if you're going to deal with this, this is going to help us out." Mm -hmm. I think right now, what's really hurting people is their economic circumstances. That even if you have a job, I mean, I'm not, not talking about those who don't have to have jobs. Mm. If, even if you do, even if you have a job, life has become more difficult in a, in a, in a very short space of time. Mm. Mm. It's not as if it's happened mm. um, over the last six years so you can adapt. You know, people are, Kenyans are very resilient. You can find, you know, little side gigs here and there. It's happening fairly dramatically. Mm. Um, where, you know, in, you know, in a month you're talking about an inflation rate of about over 5%, where prices of, you know, essentials like cooking oil, we have a war now uh, between Ukraine and Russia. You know that's where we get our wheat, and and uh, uh, and the, the prices are already bumping up. So um, there doesn't appear to be clear answers uh, from from the leadership with regard to these. But more importantly than than that, you know, because we can't expect leaders to have all the answers, mm. is that they don't seem to care. So then, this is it. That's so the would thing. you have then been? Mm existing with a population that was concerned about some things and then brought an initiative like BBI, for example, where you're able yeah. to change things within the constitution and the way in which people operate. And then that would have been happening in spite of what the general population is struggling with. I think, I think, I think, you know, uh, there are elements of the BBI that uh, purported to, to, to deal with some of these issues. Mm. Um, however, it was presented in a way uh and first of all people didn't understand you know what you know what are we doing <laughs> yes. why do you actually need to change the constitution to do some of this stuff just yep. go out and do it yep if you can shake hands in front of harambe house and and make a deal like that just get together and do some stuff get mm -hmm. things done get things done yeah. you know you know you know the best stuff doesn't really require you mm -hmm. to be instructed by a judge to implement this or that mm. you know we're one of the most overregulated uh, societies in east africa now do you drive out of be between your offices here in nairobi how many agencies you know, <laughs> i'm sure if i'll go into uh, an office in this building and the, the entire of wall licenses. is <laughs> full of is full of licenses <laughs> for different regular regulatory bodies mm. this idea that we can solve some mm. of our political and social problems mm through the law is a mistake mm. uh, it's a mistake the fact that if we tweak the constitution here mm. things will be okay mm. no it takes it takes leadership it takes will it takes people just deciding listen we're going to fix this thing 
this bridge across. You know, the, 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 the simple things that people do, you know, the bridge has collapsed. So you and I decide, uh, Ebu, let's just, you pick up that piece of wood. I'll hold one side, you hold the other side. We start putting it together. People come and, and join in and that inspires people. Yeah. And I think that's, that's what our political uh, class has lost. C it's capacity to inspire people, even at a time of such pressing issues yeah. as now. Can I but jump in? Because obviously you talked about this celebrity culture that our politicians are taking, maybe in a, you know, in a desperate attempt to woo people. Um, but Kenyans aren't buying it. That's what mm. you're saying. This 30%, and I fully agree, the 30% aren't buying it. They're not buying the hype. They see through the lies. Kenyans are unhappy. Uh, you know, uh, what, 119 out of 146 uh, countries in the world, 28 the most unhappy people. Um, looking at this 30%. And sorry, if I just hold the thought. In 2003, January, Gallup found Kenyans were the most optimistic people on the planet. Mm -hmm. They do that poll every year. Sorry. Right, right. And this is where we are now. Uh, Martha Karua, uh, Professor Kibuda Kibwana, uh, I'll say even Muhisa Kitui, the, the potential third force, mm -hmm. did they miss an opportunity? Did they misread the politics? Uh, did they misread the hegemony and, and, and get into bed with, with the losing side? Because it sounds like both sides have not captured the imagination of Kenyans. And this may have been the election when a third force would have carved out a, a neat 30%. There is that uh, that that thirty percent. Um, we also have a situation uh, which is unfortunate that has developed um, rapidly, uh, where on the one side, the cost of our politics has 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 gone up dramatically. The twenty seventeen election, the two twenty seventeen elections combined, cost a billion dollars, mm. right? Oh. So. You have to take that into consideration, even in talking about third force and that kind of thing. But these are the challenges that people face when they're entering into uh, um, competitive uh, politics. So th I think these are the things that we're weighing uh, uh, around people. Number two, uh, let's not forget, especially between 2013 and 2017, the environment that was created for organization by third forces, by non-state actors, was extremely hostile. You know, uh, my own organization, organizations I'm affiliated to, we were running around, you know, with KRA on our backs, with the police on our backs, offices being closed down, being summoned to the NG. So, so we were distracted, you know, and I, I, I put up my hands on that, in that we were, we were busy. We were kept busy, uh, huge amount of propaganda uh, against us. We were the evil society, yeah. you remember, yeah? Yep. So, Coping with all of that, this 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 has been the most hostile regime to anybody by the, except itself uh, in our history. Even more, it was the more era was easier for us to function in, uh, especially from around 1996. Mm -hmm. uh, it became a lot more easier to function. Um, that space suddenly shrunk, and and this is a global phenomenon of this sort of uh, shrinking democratic space, civic space uh, in in society. So that uh, may explain some of the pragmatic choices that some of our um, you know progressive leaders mm. have had to make this time because elections are close, um, and and the big beasts in our political savanna have have you know divided themselves into two very early and are hitting each other very hard and you know uh um you know the smaller players have been left to the side so we are forced to choose uh you know i said you know uh, it's between the devil and the deep blue sea mm. Mm. and so pe some people are saying afadali the the deep blue sea because i know how to swim a little bit mm. yeah the devil's so gonna eat you up the devil's gonna eat me <laughs> up and once 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 you've gone once you've the devil has touched you you'll never be the same again mm. but um and so um that may also explain the 30 percent um in that there are no choices john you know? someone is asking and this is tony who is asking this question is it possible that uh, john and part of civil society have lacked an entry point Hence, statements such as this one on unavailability of real core issues. Because previously, the candidate that the civil society has joined hands with has sold out. And now they can't reconcile with joining a stranger on the other side. <laughs> the devil and the deep blue sea. 
previously, you know, you've seen the civil society has aligned with yeah. a side. Opposition. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And opposition. this time, opposition. there's no clear opposition. It, and the civil society has left is left now wondering, so where do we belong? And because we don't belong anywhere, then this election is about nothing. I mean, it's, it's, it's been one of the, <laughs> the big debates within part of civil society. Uh, many of the changes that we've enjoyed in Kenya over the last 30 years have been brought about by coalition. A coalition of opposition, uh, the churches, the religious sector, uh, the international community, you know, these ambassadors making statements and that kind of thing, mm-hmm. uh, NGOs, um, and the media, yourselves, you know. Those were the, those were the partners that uh, were a sort of loose coalition. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that, you know, even when an NGO held a big press conference, you know, Spice would cover it. You yeah. know, and you know, and, and and that helped to to bring change uh, in our in our society, um, and and that has now changed. So, um, of the different actors, yes, choices being faced by civil society uh, are very very difficult. Where they say, okay, listen, there's no one to choose between. Uh, from you know, my from where I st- <laughs> I stand, I speak for myself, mm. not for Inuka uh, Nisisi at all. Uh, you know, Raila Odinga, uh, who, d- who did the handshake uh, with Uhuru Kenyatta, which sort of surprised all of us, uh, but that was the political deal they made. You know, Raila Odinga has traditionally been the person that, one, one of the people that civil society allied with mm-hmm. to support us in parliament uh, when we were under pressure um, on issues of, you know, like, you know, we have bodies coming down the Yala River now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, when we didn't have anywhere, to, you know, when, when we wanted to to lobby, uh, Raila was one of the people we could go to uh, on uh, on the constitution, on devolution, on human rights, on corruption. And uh, and so uh, one, I would like to think that Raila still has that uh, bit of him inside mm-hmm. him uh, that uh, is true to the legacy of not only himself but of his father uh to be able to to stand for the issues that uh he see, says you speak as if be, you're be, beholden yes. to the uh powers that have have put him there because I, much as we said uh Uhuru Kenyatta had some good ideas we knew he was beholden to the family's interest to the political machinery that put him there is that machinery not stronger than than Raila I think we're I think we're going to see now. Um, I am one of those who has chosen to give him as an individual the benefit of the doubt for now, mm. because I have seen him. I've worked with him before, mm. and and where you re, where I've reached out to him and said, listen, this law that they're about to pass is going to mean A, B, C, D, and I've actually seen MPs stand up in Parliament and actually stop stop things from uh, from happening, or where. Horrible things are, are being done to people in marginalized part of the country, and you want some some uh, visibility and some noise to be made about them in Parliament, or uh, you know, he's been able to bring those things uh, to the to the front. Mm. He's entered into a partnership that makes a lot of his friends in civil society uh, extremely uncomfortable, uh, and that's the the nature of the politics that we have now. And again, adds to explaining that thirty percent. I think that perhaps if that partnership had not been there, that 30% would be a, have low, a, side. Would be a lower figure. Mm-hmm. Um, but, um, uh, but you know, what you're saying is, is true. Um, we shall see quite soon where people really lie. Uh, because the beauty about this constitution by, you know, by the end of next month, they'll have to have chosen their running mates, etc., mm. uh, etc. Et Things are being forced, they're being forced to move quite quickly. Mm. Some of the alliances and realignments that we are seeing now mm. in previous elections take place at the last minute. Uh, now they're going to be forced to make those choices uh, much, much earlier. earlier. We're about, wh- how many, 130 days to the mm-hmm. election? Uh, it's just around the corner. John, thank you very much for joining us today. In 30 seconds, what is it that you need to see so that you can get people re-energized ahead of the, of the of the election i think what would really re-energize uh kenyans is um an agenda that deals in an authentic believable way with two things just 
I won't call it the economy. I'll just call it uh, livelihood. Just people's ability to survive. Mm. People's ability to feel that my life next year will be better than this year. And this year. Yeah. If you can convince people of that, because things are bad now mm. and they're getting worse, just to be able to convince people that economically things are bad, they're going to stop worsening and they're going to get better. Mm. And we're going to stop stealing. <laughs> we're not going to steal as much as we are stealing. Let me, let me, let we're going to reduce, 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 <laughs> reduce the stealing. If anyone could convince Kenyans that they're going to do that, yep. I think they would capture the imagination of Kenyans enough to be able to get enough of them to, uh, to, to, to participate to, to participate in an in a, in a, in a energetic way. Thank I'll, you, John. I'll, thank you very much. John Gidongo, CEO of Inuka Kenyan ECC.